it's no secret that I'm a big fan of the Fuji X100V. Its fixed 35mm equivalent lens is perfect for shooting on the street, and the OVF and analog controls give me that classic rangefinder style shooting experience without breaking the bank. This is the camera I reach for every time I leave the house, and I'm not alone here. The community of X100V users is growing every day, and it's amazing to hear from photographers from all around the world who have fallen in love with this excellent little camera. One question that keeps coming up is how I have my camera set up for street photography, and it's really pretty straightforward. There's a few accessories I can't live without and a couple of settings I tweak to make this camera practically perfect in every way. So let's talk about my Fuji X100V street photography setup. Let's start with the accessories. The X100V is pretty much ready to go right out of the box and you really don't need to add anything to it except maybe an extra battery or five. But that doesn't stop me from tricking out my camera to make it just the way I like. First things first, you gotta ditch that lens cap. The first thing I do with any new camera is replace the lens cap with a protective filter. That way I don't have to fumble with the lens cap every time I want to take a shot and the filter protects my lens from the bumps and grinds of shooting on the street. On the X100V this means you have to add a filter adapter before you can add a filter. I use the Fuji Air X100 adapter but any third party adapter off of Amazon will do the same thing. Now because I'm walking around with just a filter and no lens cap, that filter is exposed to the elements day in and day out. And I started seeing little chips and scratches from bits of dust or construction debris in the air. So I switched to the Hoya HD3 filter, which is supposed to be four times stronger than optical glass. And I don't know if that's a lot of hype or not, but so far it seems to be holding up pretty well. Oh, one more thing. When you add a filter and a filter adapter to the X100V, it makes the camera dust and moisture resistant whatever that means. So you're killing two birds with one stone here. Throw away lens cap, get a filter, moisture resistant, done. Number two, number two, strap one on. I want my camera to strap around my neck when I'm out shooting. I like to have both hands free when I'm not taking pictures in case I want to get a coffee or do some shopping. And the camera's right at hand when I want to take a shot. So this actually works out great for me. For smaller cameras like the X100V, I like the Gordy strap. They're made from super strong belt leather and they have this iconic cord wrapping that lets you customize the strap if you want to be all fancy. Mine has dark brown leather and bumpers with black cord wrap. It's got an understated retro vibe that looks amazing on the x 100 V and the thinner strap gets out of the way when it's time to shoot. This particular strap is just over five years old and I use it every day so you can see how well this will hold up over time. It's good and it's not going anywhere. Number three, you need somewhere to put your thumb. Even though I carry the camera around my neck on a strap, I still want to operate the camera one-handed when it comes time to take a shot. A thumb grip adds that extra bit of leverage for you to confidently grab the camera and take a shot. Listen, you could make a thumb grip out of paper clips and scotch tape, I don't care. But the one I like is made by LensMe. Fit and finish is excellent and it's got these little silicone fins to hold it tightly in place in the hot shoe so it's not going to wiggle around and drive me crazy. Also the thumb grip itself flips out of the way so you can get to the ISO dial on your X100V. It's not the cheapest one in the world but it's the one I like the most so it's in there. Next up is a soft release, if you dare. A soft release raises the shutter button up a little bit and it's supposed to reduce camera shake, but for me it just means that I can lay my index finger across the button and depress the shutter with my whole finger rather than trying to stick my fingertip into the shutter and get it just, it just it's more ergonomically good. It just feels more responsive. It could all be in my head, but I use it on pretty much all my cameras. This particular soft release is made by Match Technical and it's solid brass with a little silicon O-ring that puts pressure on the threads when it's attached to the camera so it doesn't accidentally fall off while you're walking around. Now I can tell you I've been using this for years and it hasn't fallen off once. So this little guy isn't going anywhere. Listen, a lot of people avoid these things like a plague and every time you bring it up, somebody knows someone else whose camera was destroyed because they had a soft release attached to the shutter. I've never had a problem. I've been using it for years, but this is 100% a personal preference thing. You have to decide if it's worth the risk to you. For me, it works for the way I shoot perfectly. One more thing, Fuji shutters use the shorter threads first seen in the Leica M240. So if you're buying a soft release, get the short stem version. And that's it. Those are the few little doodads I add to make my camera feel all special and nice. Next up, let's talk about my essential camera settings. And I don't do anything crazy here. I just turn off anything that would introduce lag or unpredictable behavior. Now I'm going to run through these pretty quickly, but I'll add details for each setting in the description down below, as well as the full article over on streetshooter.com. Head on over there and give my website some love, but not yet. Finish watching this video because the algorithm said so. First things first, let's turn auto power off, off. This is located at setup, power management, auto power off, off. 
There is nothing worse than trying to take a shot only to find your cameras in sleep mode. I remember this one time I was shooting down on Bay Street here in Toronto and there was this gorgeous shaft of light hitting the sidewalk with a sea of dark shadows behind it. And I could see someone walking in the shadows towards the light. And I thought to myself, oh, street photography gold. So I brought the camera to my eye to capture the moment as this person entered the light with the beautiful dark shadows behind them. And it was sleeping. I pushed the button and I pushed it again, hoping the camera would come back to life. But by the time it woke up, the person had already walked through the frame. And it was Dan Aykroyd. I raised my eyebrows and pointed at him as if to say, you're Dan Aykroyd. And he raised his eyebrows and pointed back like he recognized me or something. And he says, you know, you need permission to do that. That's my Dan Aykroyd impersonation. He says, you know, you need permission to do that. To do what? To take my picture. You can't do that without permission. I, you know, I commonly explain that in Canada, the privacy laws say there's no expectation of privacy if you're in a public place and I'm well within my rights to take a picture. And then he says, well, what if I go get the cops and tell them you're harassing me? How does that work under Canadian law? I just looked at him and said, well, what a magical fan experience this has been. And he stormed off and with him went my hopes and dreams of ever being best friends with the Blues brother. But I digress. The point is, you can't take a picture if your camera's in sleep mode. So turn off the power savings feature. You're probably gonna burn through a few extra batteries, but that's a small price to pay to know your camera's always ready for the next shot. Do it. Next up, let's turn image display off because no chimping ever, ever. Do people seriously have to look at the back of the camera after every shot to prove to themselves that they just took that photo? You can't take a picture if you're looking at the back of your camera. You should be looking for your next shot instead. It's like my friend Kenny always used to say, there'll be time enough for chimping when the shooting's done. Fun fact, I was gonna be a pop star, then everything else happened, and here I am. Let's turn touch function off. Fuji lets you use swipe gestures on the LCD screen as custom buttons. And this sounds like a good idea, but I find I was always activating the gestures as the camera was around my neck and rubbing up against my shirt. There have been so many times when I go to take a shot and the camera's in some weirdo mode that I didn't want. So that's gotta go. Now you could turn each gesture off individually, but I just shut the whole thing off and be done with it. Next, we need to set view mode to viewfinder only. The extra V has different view modes that turn the viewfinder on or off depending if your eye is at the viewfinder. But all of these modes introduce a delay before the camera's ready to shoot, so they gotta go. When I bring the camera to my eye, I need to see my subject immediately instead of waiting a quarter second or whatever for the camera to realize I'm actually using it before activating the viewfinder. In all fairness, this is something all modern cameras do. This is not a Fuji specific issue, but the delay on the X100V feels a little bit longer than other cameras I've used and it definitely gets in the way, so I just turn it off. You might need to switch to the LCD every once in a while to view menus or something like that. So I set a custom button to switch view modes. It's not a glamorous solution, but it gets the job done. Finally, I change back button focus to front button focus. The X100V lets you activate AF anytime you like by pressing the AEL slash AFL button on the back of the camera as a back button focus. But I use a thumb grip and it kind of gets in the way and makes it a little tricky to hit that button. So I set the function two button to activate AF on. That's the little button on the viewfinder mode switch on the front of the camera. Now anytime that I want to activate autofocus, I can easily hit that button with my middle finger without having to adjust my grip or fiddle with the camera in any way. Cause you can't take pictures if you're fiddling with your camera. And that's it, that's my X100V street photography setup in a nutshell. But it's not the only way to use this camera. One of the great things about the X100 system is its versatility and the camera adapts so well to so many different ways of shooting. This is just one way that works for me. But I wanna hear from you guys. How is your X100V set up for street photography? Are there any accessories you can't live without or do you use your camera bareback like nature intended? Post comment down below and share all the details. I'd love to hear what works for you. And as always, if you like this video, hit that thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. I'm trying to reach my goal of 10,000 subscribers and I'd love to have you along for the ride. There's a ton of cool videos in the pipeline and I hate for you to miss any of them. But for now, I'm Carl from Street Shooter and that's enough of me. Now get out there and take some pictures already. That's all.